Hey guys, what's up? Theo Kerr here, and today we're going to be talking about probably one of the most overlooked aspects of visual storytelling, but also one of the most influential and fundamental, at least in my opinion, and that is color grading. So today we're going to talk about color grading. Well, some of you might know a lot about color grading, some of you might know not, not so much about color grading, or some of you might be in between, like I was a couple years ago, and was like, well, I know how to color grade, but I don't really know how to actually color grade. Like if you look at the Hollywood movies, how they achieve that beautiful highlight roll off, how they achieve the beautiful balance between values and hues. So today we're gonna be talking about all of that. We're gonna be breaking it down from a technical aspect, but also really importantly, we're gonna be breaking it down from artistic aspect and backing that up technically with color palettes and uh, color tables that we can apply in not only a grade like this, but our future grades. Along with that, we're also going to be creating this really good node tree where you can just quickly move between clips on the projects that you're working on. So if you're a colorist working on a deadline or a visual effects artist working on a deadline, you can get them colored as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible. Okay guys, uh, real quick, if you don't know this, you, if you punch shift F, so if I click here, punch shift F, it'll just kind of jump us into the full screen. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the story behind this project. Like I said, color is really important for story. It's kind of important to know that. So this is a music video my friends and I shot a couple weeks back. Um, this was shot on Ursa Mini Pro G2. So we're getting 15 stops of Dan and Grange, 12 bit color depth, and we shot at Q5. So we were shooting at constant quality. Uh, there's not going to be any compression artifacts in between frames or anything like that. I like Q5 for, for projects like this. Um, although 12 to 1 or anything like that would work great at a bright sunny day like this. But I personally like to shoot Q5 for this because I'm really going to be pulling and pushing around the color a lot in this image and you'll see why. So the story behind it is basically this astronaut crash lands on this planet and is trying to reconstruct a beacon to uh, essentially save himself from the loneliness and the sanity uh, of being isolated so far away from other people. And eventually reality starts getting distorted and uh, he slowly loses connection with what is real and what is fake. Kind of a reflection of ourselves and how we can construct our own realities and be disconnected from what is really out there. So uh, <laughs> that's just a little bit, uh, that's the reason I wrote the song, that's kind of what it's about. So that's the story. And you'll probably be getting your story from your director or if you're color grading for music video, what the music video is about. It's really important they know that so that you can able to push your image there. Also the context is important as well. This is an alien planet. We're, we're dealing with an alien planet. So. We don't necessarily want to reflect a Rec 709 look on an alien planet because you would expect the colors there to be different. You can see that here. This is a highly dramatic, contrasty image. And if we go over to our scopes, you can see uh, where everything is living. So I'm just going to shift F and I'm going to go ahead and pop it out right here. So here's our scopes and you can see a lot of our image, especially this is... Oh, this is really kind of seen uh, right here in our histogram. A lot of our reds are pushed down uh, into the shadows along with some more bluer tones and greener tones, kind of evening each other out, and the mid-tones and highlights. The blues coming from the highlights is, you can kind of see right here, it's really coming from the sky, giving us this teal uh, look. And this specific look comes from the lookup table that we're using. So, so Oven Color was uh, first produced in 1996 and it was marketed by Eastern Kodak. Might sound like a familiar name. This is the Oven Color lookup table which I developed specifically to replicate that look. This one is balanced at 3000 Kelvin which allows us to do some interesting stuff with the digital color temperature and I mostly use it to develop sci-fi looks because of the complementary hues between landscape and skin tones. So that's <laughs> that's kind of the story behind this look and this uh, LUT that we're using inside of it. However, you don't have to use this LUT. I'll show you the node tree right now. And we're going to be reconstructing it as well, so don't worry uh, too much about that. Okay guys, so this is our node tree, nothing crazy going on. We got a noise reduction node. I like to apply that first because I, when I'm pulling keys, it's really nice not to have any color noise or anything. Also when you're shifting hues, it's a little annoying if you have a bunch of color noise. Not too much right now on the image, but you can kind of see right here. That's That becomes a real big issue when pulling keys, so it keeps your keys clean. Uh, also cleans up your histogram or your waveform quite a bit, so keep that in mind too. Then you have the value. Value is just the difference between 
shadows and highlights. I'll talk a little bit about that when we pull up the grayscale because there's something important to mention. Balance, this is like color temperature, tint, any kind of smaller adjustments to balance out the image to a look that we're ready to pull keys off of us. So we'll talk about that too <laughs> uh, as well. So then we have our base coming through. This is a layer mixture. By the way, if you need to add a layer to the layer mixture, just left click and click add one input. Pretty nice. So if we wanted to add a skin node on, we just click and click add one input and it go in right there. So we got the layer mixture right there. Then we have the overall, we might mess with this, we might not, it really just depends on the grain, how it's going. And then we have the oven color transformation lookup table. Uh, if you're gonna be referencing some other LUTs from DaVinci Resolve, you can use those. I'm just gonna use my personal one. It's on my website if you wanna check it out. Like I said, it's not even really officially out yet because I haven't done any like marketing or anything for it. I've just designed them and I have them there for you if you're interested. And then we have the color space transformation. So we're not actually doing a color space transformation node or anything like that. This is just to check ourselves. And I like to have it there, especially if you're gonna transform into a LUT color space. It's to check ourselves after, make sure we're not clipping our highlights or like crushing our shadows or having any kind of weird uh, banding or anything going on. So I like to have that there. If I need to make adjustments, I'll do it there. Then we have a glow node. I'm gonna turn this off for now because I don't want to I don't want it to be messing around with anything. We'll keep that we'll just kind of bypass it. It's kind of more of a tip for y'all to help y'all with highlight roll off more than anything. I don't think it would be too necessary in this, especially cuz everything's pretty sitting pretty high in the histogram you can see right here which we'll be taking down. And then we have a vignette node and I'll talk about that as well. Uh, and then it's just out. So this is a pretty simple structure, pretty nice, pretty good to work with. I will not be doing any noise reduction, but I'm gonna walk y'all through the process uh, and kind of understanding this because I see people put some really weird numbers sometimes. So keep in mind, let's check our like shadows, uh, quote unquote, because most of your noise in digital footage is gonna live in the shadows. And it looks like this shadow right here is coming from the glove and you can kind of see that represented in the histogram right there. The glove and the boots are pretty dark. So so that's probably where that's coming from. So we're gonna target that a part of the image first. Um, so temporal noise, that's basically just like the noise between the frames. So we're gonna do a one frame and I would always do better on all of these, especially when we get over here. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna keep them faster. Temporal threshold, that's the threshold between frames. So let's say we go from frame one to frame two. There's a great change in the noise or in the luminance difference, but there's really no change in the image. Then you're, you know you have a lot of noise. You wanna turn that up if it's really a noisy image, but keep in mind, you can see what it did right there it really softened it up so be careful you don't want to turn your digital image into just mush because that's not going to look good that's not going to look attractive so you know mess with that it's good to stay around a pretty low value here like i'd probably go probably go like right around there okay so there's spatial noise reduction this is essential guys seriously you want to do enhanced i'll show you right right now we turn this up look at that we just basically turn this into like one big JPEG artifact compression machine. Uh, it looks horrible. So I like to go to enhance, so watch this. There you go, look how much better that looks. It's still smush, but honestly, when you zoom out, it looks fine. And we're at 100% right now, which is nowhere near necessary for this type of image. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, like I said, start adding all this on. It's gonna start really slowing down the computer. I'm also screen recording at the same time. So this thing, this baby can only handle so much uh, stress on it. Cool, so let's go right over here. So guys, this is a pretty teachable moment that we can just talk about real quick. Uh, let's talk a little bit about color spaces, S-log curve, S-log reactions, and kind of how you need to deal with them. So we're not gonna be doing like any kind of ACES workflow or any, like, th anything crazy like that. We're just gonna kind of start off basic. This is your base grayscale. And a lot of y'all might not know, but uh, you should be checking your color grades periodically with a grayscale. Make sure you're not gonna be torturing your image or destroying your image in any kind of way because that's just not gonna be giving you a good look. It's generally a good idea to check with your grayscale. So what do I mean by torturing or destroying your image? So pull your waveform up, you'll see it right there. Let's just go ahead and use the curves because this is gonna give us a one-to-one. -one. So let's do something like this. And now watch what happens here. 
So th this is like, uh, you would never do this, but you can accidentally do this inside of your tools. If you're not quite sure what you're doing, you're not keeping an eye on the technical side, which would be your waves, waveform and scopes. You see how we've like completely just crushed our highlights down, giving this a horrible digital roll off, uh, even worse uh, than a normal digital camera. So you don't wanna be doing anything like that. The nice thing about film is that it blooms. So I'll give you an example of blooming. You see right there how this blooms out? That's because I have this prism lens filter on. It softens up the image. It blooms out the highlights. You can see that thing in the back, how it looks like it's glowing. Uh, that's a, that's more of a digital thing. I put a little filter on this digital, or that's more of a film thing, uh, but I put a little filter on this digital camera to make it bloom out a little bit more, give it a nicer highlight roll off. So this will automatically give your footage away as digital. Um, and kind of just check your grayscales. Make sure you're not doing anything crazy. Again, guys, like this can be done here. It can be done curves. It can be done uh, with highlights. So if we do something like that, look at that right there. And you'll see, I mean, like if you look at your waveform, you see that. That's a big sign for you're really messing something up. So keep an eye on that. So now that you see the base grayscale, I'm going to show you what this LUT is doing right here. And if you're gonna be working at any lookup table, it's good to check it to see what kind of tone response you're gonna get out of it. So this is the often color grayscale. You can see we have this S curve response or this S log response right here. And, and that's really, I'm gonna move this down so y'all can see. So we got a nice highlight, for, highlight roll off right there. It's pretty smooth, nothing's, you know, nothing's out of the ordinary. But you can see we've injected a bunch of color into uh, especially the shadows. We have a lot more of a blue color coming out now. You can see that we've injected a lot of color into our grayscale which is nice for our tonal look um, also since this is balanced at 30 3000 Kelvin ish uh, you're gonna want to go ahead and change your temperature and see how that's gonna affect your grayscale as well so you can see we can get some really nice values out of it uh, depending on where I'm going and inject a lot of color now here's the thing you want to be careful with what you're doing to your channels you can see right here they're going crazy uh, they're they're really separated right now, but it's just because we're using grayscale. So, and I don't recommend someone that doesn't know anything about color grading to just use them because uh, you will be you're, you're these aren't just like slap on your finish kind of things. Uh, you will be working with your image a lot. They're just really adjusting the hue of the digital uh, the digital color. So I'm gonna apply my LUT real quick. Remember this is balanced at three thousand Kelvin so we're gonna get this really warm saturated response which is kind of a cool response in it as itself but it's not really the look I'm going for for the story maybe for like a uh, kind of like hyper real sunset world this would be kind of cool but I want to in inject a little bit more mood into it so that's all gonna start here with our values and our balances and then work our way up into more advanced stuff like hue versus let's look at our waveform right here everything's living a little bit lower now in the image so that's pretty nice uh, but it looks like our shadows are still not quite touching and I do like to kind of clip down my data and kind of get the most moody responses possible and then work my way around from there. So there we go, something like that. Just pull it down right there. And then I'm gonna to go to the above on our color space. I'm just gonna pump up our highlights. So we're taking our LUT highlights and pulling them up. You can see right there, look at that. Crazy, cool. Uh, and you can see like, whoa, this looks horrible. Why would you ever use this? Well, you'll see why. So I'm gonna pull these up right here. Right now, let's go over to our parade. You can see we have a bunch of reds in the highlights and we don't actually want that uh, this extreme because it's tinting our image. So what we're gonna go over here is go over to our balance and go down to temperature and just pull it down cooler till we get something like that. And that's already putting us in a pretty nice ballpark. Um, we're probably gonna end up going cooler later on, but right now I'm just kind of, see how I'm working with the, the before the the LUT transform. So we have our LUT transform right here. This is before and this is after. And these two are kind of working tangentially together so that we're kind of finding a nice balance. Cause you don't want to do all your adjustments after you apply the LUT or else you'll get some weird like color space artifacts. Uh, and it's really important to remember that we're, our goal right here is mostly just to get us in a nice spot to pull some keys. So our really, we're doing our setting up for key pulling right here. And then we're setting our creative look uh, more down here. So just keep that in mind as well. Uh, and this is a pretty dynamic look. It looks like we're in a pretty nice space. If I do want to do something, I'll probably just go down a little bit. 
in these shadows here and probably after the color space. Whoops, too much. Kind of work our way up. And that's looking pretty nice right there and we didn't mess with any contrast or anything. We're kind of just pulling stuff around right now. And let's just quickly analyze our image. I'm not seeing any breakdown. I'm pretty paranoid about breaking down images because I've seen it so many times uh, before. So yeah, everything's looking good and nice. It's really important to look in places of contrast where like edges are, see if you get any banding or like you're pulling out a chromatic aeration or something. Uh, that'd be nice to know. Uh, Cause a lot of times when you start adjusting your image a lot, you'll see like a purple band across here and that's probably from chromatic aeration from the lens. You just didn't notice it. Cool, so we got our balance now. Uh, let's, cool, let's cool it off a little bit. And I'm kind of liking that right there. I'm gonna go to our above color space and take our highlights back down. They're a little hot up there. That's pretty nice. And then what we could do is change our ISO if we wanna make it a little bit darker. However, I'm pretty happy with 800 for now. I don't know how this is coming across on YouTube because there's no like, we're not transforming this into any specific like Rec 709 or anything. This is just a raw screen recording. Uh, you can check out the music video when it comes out and see, and see if you like it or not, I guess. Okay, cool. So now let's start talking about the technical stuff, like pulling keys and stuff. So pulling keys, don't be too afraid of it. It's so easy inside Resolve. I literally wish green screening was like this. Um, so we have our suit right here, and that's the first key we're going to pull. So let's go ahead and just do that. Punch Shift H so you can actually see what you're targeting. There we go. Cool, so it looks like we're picking up most of the suit. Let's see if we can pull anything else. That looks pretty nice and I'm pretty dang happy with that. Let's take our saturation down all the way and then pull it up some. Okay, so it looks like our saturation pretty much is on the point right there, our luminance. Nothing in the lower range, anything in the upper range. No, so it's gonna mostly be all within our hue right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Cool, and we're not grabbing too much of the landscape. So right there we are a little bit. And the reason this black glove is coming up is because of the color noise. So guys, just remember, take out that color noise. Um, but like I said, I'm not just because purposes of this video's production. Um, let's see, and it being really slow to respond. That's pretty nice right there. Do not forget to denoise the crap out of this because if you have this coming in and out, that's gonna look really weird. And one time I literally, one time I just forgot to do it on one clip and my friend was watching it and I didn't even notice it. He's like, whoa, what's going on with the ground right there? And I was like, oh, wow. Cause it's really hard to tell when you're just looking at a still frame, but when you're scrubbing through and everything's jumping in and out like that, it's not so good. So yeah, we pulled a clean key pretty fast and that's because we really set ourselves up for success. Hue versus hue. This is gonna be a fun one. So this is one of my favorite tools, hue versus, hue versus sat, hue versus luma. Um, and then we have like luma versus sat. So if you were to like grab a luminance value, you can increase the saturation there. Look at that, see that's what the image breakdown looks like. You don't wanna be doing that. So there's a specific way to do this kind of stuff and we'll talk about that. So first I like to just pick our hues here. So let's go ahead, since we have our base set up, let's generate a color palette and kind of see what we're working with. So, okay, we got a lot of blues in our shadows, uh, then some oranger tones and that's really coming from our sun right there and our suit right there in our midtones, and some more blue variants in our highlights. So yeah, we have a nice range right here. I just like to check in on the image and make sure there's nothing crazy going on. Like if we had some purples or green showing up, we'd be a little worried because that would not fit into our complementary uh, color palette that we're generating. So let's go ahead and pull that back up right there. Cool. And then you can really see the difference between our base color palette. Um, I've analyzed this image a lot, but yeah, you can see how much more dull this color palette is compared to this color palette. So let's drag that back up. It's a good idea to always analyze the color in your image so you know where you're heading. Um, value balance, cool. Hue versus, let's start pulling some of these hue versus right now. Okay, so our sky is right there. Our suit is right there. And our ground should be, okay, our ground's over there. It looks like we're pretty much picking, yeah, we're just picking around. So. And this is also represented in our image. You can see right here, we have a little spike right there. That's probably, I'm guessing the suit. Yeah, that's the suit. And then this is coming from somewhere 
over here perhaps. So you can just kind of analyze your footage. You can see we make an adjustment here. It's gonna do a lot, so let's start doing that. So we can make this like, ooh, that's kind of a cool feel, honestly. That is really Martian feeling right there. Uh, but it's not kind of fitting the theme I'm going for. So let's go ahead and just bend this up and down. And I'm just gonna prop it up slightly. And then uh, hue versus sat. Pick it and pull it. So we're not increasing the saturation of our whole image, we're just increasing the saturation of this particular frequency of light, which is the bluer light. And I like to go ahead and just bend these out a little bit, because if you make small adjustments like this, won't even let me click that close. If you do something like that, look at that. You're selecting such a small portion of the image that it's not gonna allow for any other hues. So you really wanna stretch these out, especially if you're gonna do a drastic curve like that. Just keep that in mind. Don't go too crazy. Just cause you can go this high, doesn't really mean you wanna go that high. Cause look at that sky, that's just horrible. So we're gonna add a little bit of sat in, just like that. And then we're gonna go back to our balance and I kind of think this image is looking a little flat still. So we're gonna go over here and go back to our saturation. There we go, and that's kind of changed our sky context a lot. So let's go back here. There we go. And now we're gonna to go to hue versus luma, select our sky and kind of pull that down a little bit. Let's get back some control over those highlights that we kind of crushed up there. It's just crazy that you can do this with this kind of footage. I still see we're clipping pretty hard on some stuff, which is kind of honestly fine because it's giving our sky a lot of structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there like that, but I would assume it's coming from, let's see. It's coming, okay, so it's coming from after our color space transform. This is another reason I love nodes because you can just do this kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and tame those down just a bit. I think that's a pretty healthy place to have our highlights for this particular image. Oh, and guys, I forgot to say I did switch to a parallel mixer. Um, that's just because I wasn't liking the way the layer mixer was working with the suit. So switch to parallel. It kind of depends on what kind of job you're doing. I decided parallel was better for this. And if you're also trying to add a new thing, just left click and click add one input so you can add more. And it's kind of just like the layer mixer, but slightly different. So now we're able to kind of affect our sky separately from everything else. So let's go ahead and kind of just find what we're looking for. And I'm pretty happy with where the image is right now. We'll probably go back and kind of change some stuff. We can see without the transformation, what it would look like. So I'm really enjoying the color palette that we're generating from this image. And it is definitely reminiscent of that teal and orange. I'm gonna go back to this suit and just maybe increase the gamma on it slightly to make it pop. And that looks pretty good. No major breakdowns for the image there. Nice, looking pretty good. Okay, so now let's go to our color space right here. And let's slightly increase the contrast. Just to give our image some more punch. Looking good. Uh, now let's go over to that glow and mess around with it a little bit. So let's go just reset this whole thing. And I believe all I did is just change the opacity. So we'll just turn it up to like 50 right there and then decrease the shine threshold. And you wanna make sure with this effect you don't like overdo it like that. Just something like right there. And then take the spread down. And it kinda of just gives us this nice little bloom. You can kinda of see this is before and this is after. Definitely gives you more of a dreamy look. You can also colorize it. So let's add some of that blue right there. And then I'm just gonna go and just kind of play around finding a bloom that I like. Cool, so that's just a little something to add to the image. It's like these kind of intense punches in it. And then I'm just gonna take the opacity down slightly and it's looking pretty nice. Now we just need to kind of finish off our image and that's gonna be with a vignette. Several ways you can do it. You could just use the regular resolve vignette. Where did it go? Oh, it's spelled with I. 
dislikes that go over here. Okay, so let's take that, drop it in right there. Cool. <laughs> so uh, you probably don't want to go with this, but uh, <laughs> we'll just uh, kind of change the size of it. Amorphism and then the softness. So that's a perfectly acceptable vignette, but I want to go for something a little bit more dramatic where I can have more control over the uh, kind of the uh, value range. So I'm going to go here to our curves and then I'm going to click on our vignette right there. And then I am just going to add a power window real quick. Don't need to do any tracking or anything for this. This is just going to be a natural lens vignette. So something like that. There we go. So we're really just trying to create this rich, uh, deep image within our shot. And I actually think I might move that glow forward because I was liking that cloud in the right corner. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of punching through and I like that a lot. So we'll keep that right there. Let's pull up that power window again, adjust it slightly. And there's our final image. And we can always examine the color palette, make sure everything's looking good. And I do wanna make a point with y'all real quick about that all. So just keep in mind when using the color palette that you're gonna do your noise reduction because you can see how it's changing our color scheme. And you know, just do your noise reduction in general. It's not like this is gonna affect our color scheme in any massive way, uh, but it will just help with the overall look, especially if you're gonna be mastering this like in a Apple ProRes or, or uh, delivering it to like a theater where it's gonna be projected. You definitely wanna make sure this is all under control. And if you're uploading this to YouTube or even Vimeo. I mean, Vimeo is okay, but honestly, uh, YouTube will destroy it. So let's talk about adding some film grain. So I don't recommend really going crazy on this for video sharing services that do a lot of compression, but I'll just show y'all kind of how I would treat this image as far as noise goes. So let's go ahead and take off that film grain for now and let's clean our image up. So we've got a noise reduction node right here. It looks like our Luma is fine. Our chroma is fine and it looks pretty clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and go add this film grain in like that. I'm gonna sample a place with some highlights and shadows right here. We got some shadows and some highlights, cool. So let's increase that or let's decrease that grain size. You know, we could just use a grain preset as well, making it hard. Let's do 400T, that's a pretty good one. And let's do the grain strength. So let's add some in and there we go. We got this really dirty, not really, this really grainy image. And you can kind of see some of our colors fringing right here. So if you really wanted like a super clean image, which I actually don't recommend doing, I don't recommend cleaning up like to extreme points because these imperfections add a little bit of visual interest and kind of make it look a little bit like film. If you're getting some bad artifacts and stuff, you definitely don't want that. So let's do enhance. Let's make sure this other one is on enhance as well. Okay, sweet. It is. So let's go back to enhance and let's just do no lumen necessary. Chroma, there's a slight cleanup. So you can kind of see right here, the noise, if we increase the chroma, kind of smooths it out. It's not necessary. It's just an idea, especially if you're working with like really low light footage. After you do some grading to it, you'll see it break apart again. So I like to, with low light footage, I like to, if it's shot in raw and it's shot too dark, I like to lift the ISO up. Usually that's gonna color tint and everything. So I like to adjust all that. And then I like to do another grade pass over at the very end. And let's go ahead and I really like how this is helping our, our image fall off. It's giving us a really nice look and it's kind of fitting that grittiness. Now, of course, when I upload the final version of this, I'm probably not going to add film grain. I'm going to do a couple tests, but usually uh, on YouTube, I find that some that most of the time it just is a dirty compression mess and it just softens up your image and the grain doesn't come through. So that's a little sad. There's not a huge difference. You can see looking from here to here. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it guys. I wanna thank y'all for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something most importantly. Uh, I'm so glad that I have this opportunity to share everyone with you living in this digital age. Truly, uh, I've been reflecting on it. It's pretty amazing. Also, if you want to check out those LUTs, I spent a lot of time on them over six months. Used it on so many projects, freelance and personal. I spent a lot of time developing those color palettes from those film stocks. So definitely go check that out. I think you'll be interested. You know, you don't have to buy it 
just go read go read on the website you can just go read on my webpage about them and maybe make your own and tag me on instagram or something if you uh make your own and post anything about that because that would be really dope also if y'all have any questions or want to share your work with me instagram is probably the place to reach me the best because i barely read my emails no, I'm not a good businessman, but whatever. Thanks, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Go apply this to something to seal this no tree. Uh, it's my best no tree currently for a project like this. And remember, you need to copy your grade to the next image. Just punch the equal sign, and then it will do that. So it'll copy all this nodes on over. So you already have a good starting off point because you'll have your value and balance usually uh, where you want it, and then you just can change some smaller stuff around there. So, guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Peace out.